All right, so like I said, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. The, these are all reviews, so it should be easy stuff. Uh, one thing I want to remind you, don't forget to circle a variable. Draw that line of equality every time. All right, just give yourself those reminders. Now, there's another reminder we're going to give ourselves here in this one because it has a square, and that's boxing the square. We want to box the square. As a reminder, we need to get that square by itself, and then we'll get rid of the square. Since there's nothing outside the box, what can I do right off the bat? We can take the square root, and that's going to do what? Why do we take the square root here? It's going to get rid of the, the square. So we take the square root on the left side to get rid of the square. We take the square root on the right side because whatever we do on one side, we have to do on the other. So the square and the square root cancel, leaves A. And then on the right side, uh, 12 is not a perfect square, is it? So since 12 is not a perfect square, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to go off to the side. We're going to have to do a factor tree. Um, and then we're going to rewrite it. So instead of the square root of 12, it's the same thing as the square root of 2 times 2 times 3. And then, and then circle pairs. And the pairs are going to go where? On the outside. Anything that wasn't paired goes on the inside. So the square root of 12 is the same thing as 2 times the square root of 3. And where do I need to write that? Up here in this equation, right? So uh, we get 2 times the square root of 3. Now, in this problem, it's not as obvious as some of the other problems, but that's not the only answer. Remember, when we have a square on the variable, we could have two different answers. So A could be positive 2 square root of 3, or A could be negative 2 square root of 3. And the reason is, if 2 square root of 3 times 2 square root of 3 gives us 12, then that means a negative 2 square root of 3 times a negative 2 square root of 3 also gives us 12, because a negative times a negative is a positive. So a could be 2 square root of 3, or a could be negative 2 square root of 3, and we should have both of those answers. In a problem like this, uh, where we don't have to do any more work, you could write this answer down here if you want, right underneath, uh, but you should have both of them. So, again, we'll set it up here, circle the variable, draw the line of equality, and <coughs> box the square root. Remember that box is reminding us to get the square root by itself before we can get rid of it. So what do I need to get rid of that's outside the box? Three. need to get rid of that 3. And how am I going to do that? Divide by, divide by 3. So we divide by 3 on both sides. 3's cancel each other out, leaving everything else, the square root of 3b minus 2. A lot of people forget to bring the square root down on this step. Don't forget that. We didn't cancel the square root out yet, so we need to keep it with us. Um, on the other side, 6 divided by 3 is? 2. two. two. All right, now what? Square, square. Now we get rid of the square root, and we're going to do that by squaring it. So we square both sides, square and square root cancel, leaves everything that was on the inside. And on the right side, 2 squared is? 4. Okay? Now what? Get rid of the minus 2 by adding 2. Those cancel. Leaves 3b equals 6. And then divide by 3. And we're going to get b equals 2. All right. Uh, this one looks kind of complicated, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. There is a little bit of a trick here in this one. Uh, we have D's in a few different places. We have D's on both sides of the equal sign. Um, so we're going to have to uh, remember how to deal with that. And don't forget, you are allowed to use your notes on quizzes, tests, whatever. Um, what are we going to do first to simplify this, to try to get D in one place? We're going to distribute. So we distribute here. We distribute the 3. And 3 times D is? 3D. 3D and 3 times 4 is? Four. So we get 3d plus 12, and then we've got our minus 5d that we'll bring down. On the other side, we can distribute. Um, we're not distributing the 4, though, because the 4 is not right next to the parentheses. So it's not 4 times the parentheses. What we have right next to the parentheses is just that negative. Now, if we want to put something there, what can we put there? One. We can put a 1 there. So we're distributing a negative 1. What is negative 1 times d? 
negative d, or we, we could write it two different ways. We could write negative d, or we could write negative 1d. And what is negative 1 times positive 9? Negative, negative 9. So when we distribute this negative, it's going to make both of these numbers in the parentheses negative because they started out positive. And then we do need to bring that 4 down, and we need an equal sign on the line of equality. All right, so we distribute and bring everything else down. Um, now what? Combine like terms. 3D minus 5D gives us negative 2D. Um, the 12 does not combine with anything, so we'll just bring that down. And then on the other side, the negative 1D does not combine with anything, so we bring that down. And the 4 and the negative 9 combine to give us negative 5. Okay, now, we've simplified both sides, but we still have d's on both sides, so we need to get rid of one of them. We want to get rid of the, 2D. the smaller one, right? Which one is smaller, negative 2d or negative 1d? Negative 2d. Why is negative 2d smaller than negative 1d? It looks like it's bigger, doesn't it? It's farther to the left. Yeah, so when we're dealing with negative numbers, a, a big negative number is smaller than a small negative number which sounds kind of backwards, but that's the way it works. So uh, negative 2 is going to be farther to the left on the number line, so that's the one we want to get rid of. How do we get rid of the negative 2D? Add 2D. Add 2D. Now, if you did it the other way, that would be okay. You would still get the right answer. Uh, this problem, you would have one more step that you would have to do, um, and you would have to divide by a negative, but it's still going to work. Um, 2Ds cancel, leaves 12 over here. On the other side, what's negative 1D plus 2D? 1D, positive 1D, right? Yeah. And then we have our minus 5. Now, before we go any further, what am I going to do uh, later on when I want to get rid of this 1? How do I get rid of it? Just drop it off, right? We don't need that 1 there, so I don't need to take a step to do that. Uh, some people want to divide by 1 to get rid of a 1 there. You don't need to do that. Okay, that's more work than you need to do. So we're just going to leave it as D minus 5, and then we need to get rid of that 5 by... Adding 5. And so when those 5's cancel, that leaves D all by itself on the right side. And 12 plus 5 is 17. 17. All right, we want to solve for E here. Um, there's a few different ways we could do this. We could do this using the same steps that we've just been doing. Start by distributing, and then combine like terms. Um, and then get the E by itself. In this problem, do we have E's in different places? No. No. So we could do all that stuff, but it's probably going to end up being more work than it, than it needs to be. Okay, what we can do here is we can just get rid of stuff one at a time. So if I, if I just want to get rid of things to get this E by itself, that means I have to get rid of this 3, this 2, this 5, and this 3. Which one of those four things should I get rid of first? The minus 3 here, right? So if we're doing order of operations backwards, we get rid of addition and subtraction before we get rid of multiplication. So we'll get rid of that minus 3. We add 3 to both sides. Uh, now, let me just say this before I go any further. If you did this the other way, by distributing and combining like terms and then solving for E, um, don't change it. You should get the same answer, and that's fine. Um, if you get the get a different answer in the end, I'm going to go through it the other way too, so you can check check your work that way. All right, but let let's just get rid of things here first. So we got uh, the threes canceling here, so that leaves three times the quantity two e minus five, and then on the other side, zero plus three is three. Okay, then what? I'm trying to get the e by itself, so we're going to divide by three. And those threes cancel over here. That leaves two e minus five. And notice that I don't have the parentheses anymore. Why don't I, why don't I need those parentheses? Yeah. So everything that's left would be in the parentheses, so we don't need them. Um, so that's that's all that's left in there. Uh, now we'll get rid of the five. And when we cancel the fives over here, we get two e equals. 6, and then we get rid of the 2, and when those 2's cancel, we get E equals 3. 
Um, I, I do want to go through the other way really quickly just to show you that we get the same answer. So doing it that way, we got 3. Um, if we want to distribute first, we distribute the 3. We get 3 times 2e is 6e, and 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, and then we bring down our minus 3 equals 0. Then we'll combine like terms. So the negative 15 and the negative 3 combine to get negative 18, and then we still have our 6e here. Um, that still equals 0. Now to get e by itself, we're going to add 18. And those 18s cancel on the left, leave 6e equals 18. And then divide by 6. And when those 6s cancel, we get e equals 3. Same thing we got the other way, right? Both ways take four steps. Um, this way actually is slightly less actual writing, um, but they both give us the right answer. So w if you had a problem like this on the test, it wouldn't matter which way you do it. You would still get full credit as long as you do everything correctly and get the right answer. All right, last one. We have an equation that has a solution. At least we think this is a solution. We want to check to make sure this is correct. So rather than distributing and combining like terms and getting the f's on one side and solving for f, we just want to check to see if this is correct. So what are we going to do? We're going to put the 0 in anywhere we see an f here, and then we're going to simplify it and see if we get the same thing on both sides. So I'm going to rewrite the equation. So I have 5 parentheses 2, I'm sorry, it should be a 3, 3 plus 2f. But where the f is, I'm going to put a 0, because that's what we think f is going to equal. And then on the other side, we have 6 times f, so there I put the 0, plus 15. Notice that I put the zeros in parentheses, because when we have the 2 next to the f, I don't want it to look like a 20, but I want it to look like 2 times 0. All right, now once I've done that, what I want to do is I want to simplify each side. So let's just do the left side to start with. On the left side, what's the first thing we would do? No. Order of operations. So we're going to do what's in the parentheses, which is the 3 plus 2 times 0. And then within the parentheses, do we add or multiply first? Multiply. We're going to multiply. So we multiply 2 times 0 and get 0. So in the parentheses, now we have 3 plus 0. And then we'll evaluate what's in the parentheses. 3 plus 0 is 3. So we have 5 times 3, which is? Okay. So we get 15 on the left side. Uh, on the right side, what are we going to do first? We're going to multiply 6 times 0 or do 0 plus 15? Multiply, multiply 6 times 0 and get zero. 0. So we get 0 plus 15. And then we add the 0 plus 15 and get 15. So what does that mean? It's a correct answer, right? It's a correct solution because we get the same thing on both sides of the equal sign. So since we get 15 here and we get 15 here, that is a correct answer. And how am I going to show that? Put a check mark next to it. So you put a check mark next to the answer. That shows that we know it's correct because we plug, plug 0 in for f and we confirmed it.